Hi, I'm Ali. Today I'm going to read you a story, The Teeth. Are you ready? Yeah. Spooky. Chapter 1. One gloomy, breezy afternoon in autumn, Carl, Carl and his younger brother Joe were on the beach by the old pier. They often went there to meet with their friends or just to throw stones in the in the sea. Sometimes they tell each other spooky stories. The, the old pyre with its rotten, creechy plants was a good setting for telling and listens to spooky stories. They like trying to scare each other and they like being a bit scared too. Carl ducked be behind one of the pyre's crunchy old pyres. I'm the ghost of the pyre. I'm coming to get you, he whispered in the wind. Joe laughed. Well, I'm a ghostbuster, and I'm not scared of you. He bent down to pick up some seaweed and threw a curl, and he felt something sharp in his hand. <gasps> he is trying to pick up the seaweed to put something sharp? <laughs> Hey, what is what's what's this? He said. He dug in the sand with his hand. Carl came over to join in. It's some teeth, said Joe. I wonder where they came from. Joe held the teeth in his plane. They were big, about the size of his little finger, and Car Carmel colored. Thin black lines, like like cracks, ran through them. They they were shaped like the letter Y, and were sh very sharp too. Joe pricked his finger one of them, and it drew a blood. Ow! That's sharp! He yelled. It's that sharp. <gasps> This shirt. Carl laughed. Don't be a baby, he said. He took he took the teeth from Joe. I reckon that's a shark's teeth, he said. Or maybe it's vampire teeth, he grinned, holding the teeth up at each side of his mouth. They're really big, said Joe. His eyes widened and with excitement. They might be Dinosaur's teeth. What would, what would a dinosaur be doing on a sea? Scrolled Carl. They are a good thought. Whatever they came from. Oh, really sharp. The brother decided that they they would ha had one tooth eat each. They took the teeth home, thinking about how they would impress their friends. Joe put his to tooth on the shelf above his desk next to the some stones and shells and a dried up starfish. He's other treasures from the sea. He liked the way it looked there and decided it was the best of all his treasures. Carl tied up thin string around his tooth and wore it around his neck. He liked to imagine what it had magical powers. He imagined he was a superhero. Tiger man or shark man, heroes of the sea, dangling from his neck. The tooth appeared to curl to gleam. There was a tiny spot of red firm where Joe's finger had blood on it. That was cool, Carl thought. <gasps> blood. <sighs> he shot it on. Too scary. But why did he keep it? Because he likes something spooky to him. Oh, right. They like to be a little spooky too. <gasps> the mm. night a storm blew up. The wind rattled on Carl's window. He woke up. It took a few moments for his eyes to get 
room is still a gloom. His room wasn't totally dark because his room door was open and the landing light was on. His curtains weren't drawn because the light then that the way so that he could see the night night outside. Slowly he looked over. Dad, Dad was Dad at the window. He thought he saw a dark shape outside. Was that a paw pressing against the pane? A giant paw? He was sure that he could hear angry breathing too. Or was it just the wind? Carl got out of the bed and went over the window. But there was nothing there. He pulled the curtains tight across the window and got back into his bed. Suddenly, the curtains blowed away from the wind window into room as if blew by a strong breeze. But the window was shut. Carl swayed and turned his face. <gasps> the window was shut, but there's a wind coming out. Oh. So the curtains, <gasps> there's the teeth. Yeah. Why do you keep them? Yeah. In the bedroom next door, Joe woke up too. Some, something with very sharp claws was scratching at his window, trying to get in. No, it was just a branch of a tree scraping against the glass, wasn't it? Of course it was, just for an instant. He thought he felt something sharp against his skin. But the thief is here. The room suddenly turned into icy cold. Joe pulled the velvet over his head, but he couldn't get warm. He lay awake for ages, shaking with a heart ball of fear in the pit of the stomach. <gasps> Stomach and there's something feeling in the skin. <gasps> Maybe this tooth was someone's tooth. Yeah. And the kind of animal. Yeah. <gasps> the next morning, the brothers talked about their dreams. Usually, they, they would have laughed at each other and said, that was a good one. But this morning was different. It wasn't a joke. Joe was really scary. What if those kids really did belong to a vampire, he said, or a flesh-eating beast? There's no such thing as vampires, said Carl lightly. Oh, it, it was just you imagine. He said this to try to make Joe feel better, but exactly he'd been spooked too. They thought about what to do. Let's take the teeth to the museum in town, said Carl. Old Mac will know what creatures they came from. Old Mac, Mr. Mac themselves owned the museum. Good idea, Joe agreed, perking up a little hand. Per perhaps they'll, they'll be val valuable and we'll get a reward. Yeah, said Carl. They thought about what they they would do to the reward and started to forget their fears. <gasps> it's 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 too scary, so they just spilled the mo milk <gasps> and spilled the honey. Oh. <gasps> Did they have nightmare yesterday? No. No. They could they couldn't sleep. So, ah, look sleep. at their eyes. Ah. They couldn't sleep. Ah. Keep ready. Mm. There's something sharp on their skin. Ah, goosebump? Oh. Kind of a goosebump? No, but the teeth is here. Ah. I don't like that move. Oh, maybe this is Mr. Mac. Ah, he may be fine. What is... What creature may be. Yeah. Too. After school, Joe and Carl took the teeth to the museum. They often went there. They loved the many schools and sca sca 
skeletons and stuff wild animals on display the museum was gloomy and dust and little the old pyre had an air of dark mystery about it the old mac was at his desk he seemed to be be asleep with his wild gray hair and old-fashioned clothes he he fitted in well with the museum's expense. Carl Kothlacher. <clears throat> <clears throat> and old Mac's eyes sprang up. Oh, what? He muttered. It's only us, laughed Carl. <gasps> oh, look. Mammoth? some bones, mammoth. Well, what do you want? Old Mac grumped. The brother showed him the teeth. Can you tell us what creatures they came from? Joe asked. This, this teeth is from the... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. Okay, I can say now. I think it's a saber-toothed tiger's teeth. Mm. Long ago, it was trying to get rid of other animals and it passed the sea and... So big teeth. Yes. Yeah. Wait a minute. Um, where do it do? Okay. Joe asked. Old Mac frowned. Do you want? I've got nothing better to do with my time. He grumbled. I've got expense to sort. You know. Joe and Carl smiled at at one at another. They they even expense. In the museum had never changed since the first day. They've come in years before hardly anyone visited the place. Joe and Carl, old Max met ways. He could be, be grumpy sometimes, but he's full of interesting information. He was actually quite friendly to when you got to know him. Old Mac peered at the teeth through his glass. Then he said, follow me, he said, and he led the boys into a back room. The, the brothers grinned and each other. This place was full of old stuff. There was boxes and cases from floor to killing, I mean, cleaning, cleaning, cleaning? Where? Oh, I was meaning... Um, a ceiling, 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 yeah. ceiling peeping mm -hmm. out from among them was the skeleton of some sort of an animal. One, a table in a glass display case, a wild bird of prey glared and claws raised as it to attack. <gasps> Joe looked at the claws and thought about the scratching he'd heard at his wind the night before. Maybe it was just a bird I heard last night. Joe whispered at Carl, Carl nodded. Old Mac put the teeth under a um, microscope. Then he focused it carefully to examine it in the gloomy room. The teeth seemed to glow. Joe and Carl waited impatiently they they were sure those teeth were special but where did they came came from old man stood up straight he shuffled over the shelf and took down a a thick caddy old book he put it on the counter dust puffed into the air now boys what do you think this teeth belongs to me he asked, a shark, said Carl, a dinosaur, said Joe. The museum owner shook his head. They do come from a creature, he said gravely, but neither of those. He opened the book and pointed at a picture of the page. That's what they came from. He declared the boys start at their picture ignorantly. Then their faces crisped in in disgust. A dog, they cried. I'm afraid so, said old Mac. 
chuckling. They came from a dog, a big dog. I can't believe it," said Carl. And Joe shook his head with disappointment. Mm, just a dog. Yes. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Spooky. Spooky forest. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Do I read chapter two? The starting of the chapter two? Yeah. Yes. You did. Okay. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Chapter three. It was dark when the brothers made their way home. Crisp brown leaves rustled about their feet in the breeze. A dog sighed Carl. Well, at least it wasn't anything scary, said Joe. No, Carl said. I'm not scared of a dog. At that moment, there was a noise behind them. It sounded like a growl. The boys. Turned. Was there something moving in the darkness? Carl laughed. We are a pair of scaredy cats, aren't we? He said. Joe laughed too, but a little nervous. He wanted to go home quickly, out of the dark. Let's take out the shortcut home across the beach. He suggested. Carl agreed. <gasps> What is it? I don't know. When they got to the beach, the wind was blowing waves of sand towards the sea. To meet the waves of weather, were lapping into the shore. Out of the sea, a single fishing boat slipped across the bay. The only sound were the rumble and he, he, hiss of the. Waves and and now and then a whoosh as they slapped against the old pier. The boys walked quickly across the sand. Old Mac had a good laugh back there, didn't he? Said Carl. I reckon reckon that's the most he's laughed for years. Jordan, <gasps> what is it? Suddenly, a blood-curdling howl pierced at the darkness. The boys stopped in their tracks. They thought they could hear panting and a soft patter of paws on, paws on the sand. They turned, but they couldn't see anything. So they started to walk faster. Then the panting and pattern stared up again. It was getting closer and closer. Some something's following us," gasped Carl with a shiver. Joe was too scared to say anything. He had goosebumps all over. The boys started to run, their feet slipping in the sand, and pebbles. But they, panting and pattering, kept on coming closer. There was another blood curdling howl right behind them. This time. <gasps> A big dog. <gasps> beast. It looks like beast. No, it's a dog. It's a dog. Big I think dog. It's kind of wolf. No, it's a big dog. <gasps> they turned once more, and and in the bright moonlight, they saw an enormous hound. It was big as a lion, and there was a ghostly gleam around it. It growled fiercely and and bared its massive. Fearsome teeth, blood dripping from his huge jaws, it stooped up on its hind legs, with its paws raised. Its claws were as sharp as a spear. Its eyes were very red, wild, terrifying. It was not like any dog the boys had ever seen. This was creature of nightmares of knowledge. But it said it's a dog. It doesn't look like the dog, but it is a dog. Oh. <gasps> Wait a minute, it's not done. Oh, this is the next day. Mm -hmm. Look, Carl breathed. The ghostly dog had two teeth missing. I, I think it wants. Is 
Strangio. We'd better give them back, or he'll tear us to pieces. Car whispered. The hound snarled and and raised its claws higher. The boys shuddered. Then they dropped the teeth in the sand by the old pyre, just where they had found them. Turned at a, at a. Turned and ran for their lives. They ran and ran, wrecking through the dark. Never, never once starting to look back. Until breathless and scared, they arrived home. From that night on, Carl and Joe, Joe never picked up anything from the beach, not even a pebble,、oh. and they never want, went back to the old pier again.、Oh. Done. Good job.